Well, I should learn you never put away your snow shovel before mid-May in northern Minnesota. And yeah, I did, and I caused this snowstorm in, what was it, April 21st. But hey, it quickly melted, and we got on to spring in the Sagzim bog. Absolutely dead calm, not a breath of wind. 60-some degrees, May 1st, Gray Jay Way. I walked down here because we're flagging two new spots for benches. Um, it is a half mile walk, and so now you can make that even easier and longer. <laughs> you can uh, stop and sit at uh, multiple spots along Gray Jay Way. First thing I ran across was this beautiful Franklin's ground squirrel. Yeah, it's, it's, sightings are not that common. It is a colorful ground squirrel. This is a species of the northern Great Plains, the tall grass prairie, but it does get up into northeast Minnesota as well. Yeah, just always fun to see these guys. Oop, uh, another sign of spring. Eastern garter snake tucked into the bog there. Eastern Phoebe's just back. And oh, one of my favorite sparrows, the white-throated sparrow. And this is a white-striped adult. Look at the bright white stripes, the yellow lores. But then here's the tan-striped. And a lot of people think, oh, that must be the female. And the white-striped, the male. No, these are adults. We don't know the sex of them. They're just two color morphs. And what's really interesting <laughs> is that the white stripes always mate with the tan stripes. So in a pair, the white stripe could be male and the tan stripe female, or vice versa. Yeah, really, really interesting. The first dragonflies of the season are out, maybe basket tails. Not sure. Wood frogs calling. They just started calling. Palm warbler, yellow rumped warblers singing and on territory. Juncos, this is their habitat as well. Black spruce bog. Mainly the kind of sparse ones, taiga-like. Yeah, I've been squeaking and pishing for hopefully a Canada Jay because the young are probably fledging right now. It'd be fun to see them. But man, just quiet. Hey, I want to tell you all about this exciting new program. We have Artist in Residence, and this is part of a grant. We are opening it up to artists of many different mediums. And the whole idea is to showcase the bog diversity, the critters, the plants, and what makes bog so special in peatlands, not just in Saxon, but around the world. And connect that to climate change and how sphagnum moss and peat bogs are a major carbon sequester for the planet. Applications are online on our website. You've got till end of May to get those in. And it's in August, late August 18th through the 24th. We're excited, only a couple will be selected of all the entries, so get those entries in. Friends of Saxon Bog is definitely a part of the community of Meadowlands, Cotton, Toivola area, and twice a year we do a litter cleanup along our Adopt-A-Highway stretch of County Road 133. And then at the end, we always have this fun thing where we see who found the best piece of garbage. And Julie Olala often is the winner, and here she is proudly displaying the wig she found. She says she doesn't wear it, but who knows. 
So who will win the great garbage reveal of 2025? Let's see. Underwear. That, that was, was long uh, underwear. I got mad on that. Was there. Oh, that, that was the hair was long already. Was uh, oh, no, I she found, did. I found a, a large and a small. <laughs> a large and a small. For the same hair. Are you serious? Oh, we got a pair. Yeah. Now we got a pair. Well, we both. <laughs> the same hair. Yeah. How in the world? How far? How far? Not and the Bob Ross air freshener. freshener. I found this tool cache. Look at this. Wow. I found a, a wrench she and a, a tool with um, the ends on it and two fire starters. Wow, look at <laughs> and this. that's a DeWalt. That it's a DeWalt. DeWalt. It's a pretty good, What's yeah, it's a pretty good set of tools. Yeah, that's I what you were doing it. back there all that he while. Yeah. And I got a now you can see she's screwed. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Look out, it could fly apart. <laughs> Lori. Well, look. In case you're wondering if anybody has any energy, we've got the oh. amp meter. Oh. Look at it. It's got great color. Which look at orifice it. Do we <laughs> Which orifice? I don't know. It has a few little... That's disturbing. Wow. If dollar value. Like Can I have to Julie? I, I love... I think Ron's finds... Yeah. 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 <laughs> what a crazy group and we'll be back at it in october again who will find the best garbage then stay tuned also i gotta tell you my friend blake he's got his own youtube channel now check it out blake takes you on different birding adventures in the north woods of minnesota i'm a big fan blake keep it up yeah he's got some cool footage of turkeys fighting two tom turkeys fighting belted kingfishers mating, some really cool hooded mergansers displaying. Yeah, so fun stuff. Check it out. And you know what? He's only nine years old. Wow. <laughs> awesome. And now let's go join Clinton on his things that go buzz, croak, hoot, and bump in the night program. It's a program from 6 to 10 p.m. explores the world of dusk into darkness, a very unexplored time of day. Because we're going into the darkness, uh, and so we'll do our best to sort of uh, cover a few things here and there, um, from bugs to birds to critters. And... So that's sort of the hope, is to see some of these things we otherwise may not see, those owls that are crepuscular in this sort of window, or those frogs and toads that are out and just making all these lovely little sounds for us. But the goal is to just be in it and just to enjoy it for a while. If you're looking for sale manager, you might want to keep around. Superstar. <laughs> yeah, nice work. <laughs> really, really good. Really, really good. He's getting away. He's running 20 miles an hour. Oh, yeah, nice. <laughs> really. So, one of the big things to remember when we're interacting with amphibians, especially, um, you really don't want to touch them with dry hands ever. Excellent, excellent, excellent. All right. He's our little guy. <laughs> um, and so this though, far and away, is the common thing. Um, and when we think about how common, um, it's weird because this is not a very easy to find critter. Um, it is one of the most abundant vertebrate animals in northern Minnesota by its weight. Um, this is not a very big animal, this is an adult. Um, and this is how big they are, What's which is called? super cool. Blue spotted salamander. Um, and this is a really awesome species because this one's got some really lovely blue on it, but you might find them almost entirely black. A lot of our salamanders have a lot of color on their bellies. So they have this kind of speckling on their belly um, and you don't need to flip over a salamander. Just a short ways away, I spotted this very cool Tetranatha long-jawed orb weaver spider in its web. They are just emerging for the season and this colorful Firefly larva. Well, 
we look for the mushrooms that eat the bone. Um, <laughs> so they jump really, really well. Um, but the, the one thing to remember is that a lot of the times frogs will change colors into breeding condition. Sudacris crucifer. Crucifer X. Whoa. X on the back, right? So we've got a pretty easy way to remember this thing. What's you can. This? Oh, oh yeah, it's turkey vulture. Hey, bud. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Working hard. And so we start picking up sound and more sound and more sound as we go. On our way to our next spot, Clinton spotted a very distant and very late rough-legged hawk should be back in the arctic buddy <laughs> She's got a big fat thumb, and that's how he holds on to that female. Um, because if he wants to pass on his genetics, he better hold on to her and not let any other males get in there. This is a really northerly distributed critter. Um, wood frogs get really far north. We think of this as kind of the typical northern frog. What do they eat? Uh, these are going to eat a whole mix of aquatic and terrestrial insects. Um, females won't eat things that are too much bigger than that, where some of our frogs, like green frogs, will eat huge, huge stuff. We got another one? Where the other one did not, but notice how it's unicolored. It's still that nice kind of, kind of maroony color. Um, and we've got a peeper in breeding condition. So do you remember our other spring peeper that had the X on its back? This one does not have the X. It's way darker. And so this is pretty normal for spring peepers in their breeding condition. They're just, they're just kind of one color. And this one's a male because its little throat pouch is going. You see his little pouch? So this is male. Again, we can look at his thumbs, but this one's got the pouch going. So even though its name is spring peeper, spring peepers are tree frogs. Um, they're not like our gray tree frog, but they are very closely related. So again, I told you about latinings and how those can be very, very useful to identify. Mm -hmm. And then again, the interlopers. <laughs> Working hard. Just trying. Um, but again, not as strong as our so true tree frog. So they have round toes. Oh. And then again, the interlopers. <laughs> Working hard. Just trying. Um, so we got a big, messy, globby cluster, um, and that's a really good indicator you're dealing with frogs and toads, especially frogs, because toads tend to lay their eggs in big, long strings. Um, they almost always will attach them to something like this, vegetation, um, or maybe a stick, something like that. Um, and so there's a really good reason to do that. But it's, look at the stripes on it. That's a really nice one. Oh yeah. Really beautiful. We're having to catch them. Look for a white Well, we wrapped it up here. Things that go buzz, croak, hoot, and bump in the night. It's a program we've been doing with Friends of Sags and Bogs since 2014. So yeah, Clinton did an awesome job. We had a blast. All right, it's 1130. I'm going to bed.
Superstar bird of this episode for me. Hmm. I'm going with white-throated sparrow. A real bird of the boreal forest. Almost as famous for its song. I'm sure I told you this already, but in most of America it sings, Old Sam, Peabody, Peabody, Peabody. In Canada, it's, Oh, sweet Canada, Canada, Canada. And in Minnesota, don't you know, it's, Old Sven Peterson, Peterson, Peterson. Superstar amphibian, no doubt, the blue spotted salamander. <laughs> Take care, and we'll see you in the next episode of Virtually Live. Mm-hmm.